Shao is a character who has gotten significantly better in recent times. His teams and their popularity have spiked, being apparently the most popular team for the current Abyss Floor 12 on the Chinese side. Now, I typically don't care about stats like these because they don't really matter, and they are currently inflated with the current Abyss Blessing and it being Shao's rerun, but it goes to show you that Shao has gotten much more popular and also a lot stronger. In today's video, I want to talk to you about why, what changed to Shao's builds, teams, and overall power level, cover his strengths and weaknesses, and talk about why I believe Shao is such a strong unit right now if you can build and play him correctly and discuss what you need to maximize his strength. On top of that, I'm going to try to put my bias aside in this video and be as honest as possible talking about both Shao's strengths and also his weaknesses while also covering important information to maximize his builds, talking about his best artifacts, stats, weapons, as well as various team comps. Before I begin, I want you guys to know that I do stream most sites on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested. Feel free to subscribe if you want as it helps me out. And with that being said, let's get right into it. Alright, so starting things off, what does Shao do? Why did he get better? what changed, and what are his strengths and weaknesses. Well, as you may know, Shao is an Anemo Hyper Carry who infuses his attacks with an Anemo through his burst, increasing his jumping height and allowing him to spam plunge attacks. Because of this, Shao is a really good and well-consolidated AoE, form of area of effect damage, that can typically plunge everything around him. While this will disperse enemies, there are ways to sort of push them together. If you position correctly, there's depth to his playstyle, you can weave in normal attacks, or even Anemo infused charge attacks, and typically acting as a pure Hyper Carry, doing a majority of your team's damage. With that in mind, what what changed with this character? Well, Shao came out like three years ago in version 1.3, and while he was good at his release, he has gotten a lot better since then. Not only has Shao gotten a wide range of weapons, both new four stars and five stars, but more crucially, he's gotten better and more accessible artifact sets, as well as incredibly powerful supports that will skyrocket his damage when compared to teams without them. Now, while I will cover how to build his artifacts a bit later in the video, what you should know for now is that Shao's best in slot changed from just going two piece, two piece, based on substats to Vermilion, which is typically around a 10% damage increase, but was not a very efficient set to farm. In recent times though, with the release of Fontaine, Vermilion was added to the strong box, making it less terrible to farm, as farming the Vermilion domain alongside Echoes is usually not the best idea. Echoes is very niche, typically used mostly just on someone like Ayato, and even then, it's a set that gets worse on high ping, and farming that domain typically just doesn't feel great, given how unflexible the artifact sets are. Take it from me, I've lost most of my sanity in that one place. Now, now, more important than Vermilion, though, is actually Marais Chaussée. While Marais Chaussée isn't necessarily better than Vermilion, they're actually similar and it depends on the situation, which I'll cover a bit later. What you need to know is that it's a flexible artifact option and just another one that you can build on your Shao. You might farm it passively, it's a more efficient domain, and it's a set that can be used on virtually any character when paired with Farina. Because of this, farming that domain of Marais Chaussée and Golden Troop can be a bit more efficient, making building your Shao easier. You no longer have to farm a domain of Agony and Sadness. You can either Strongbox Vermilion or build Marais Chaussée. And while mix and matching 2B sets is still a very viable option, it is now a lot easier to get a set that will give you maybe a 10% damage increase without taking as big of a hit on your sort of resin efficiency. Even bigger upgrades than that though are going to be the supports that Shao has gotten. Now while Shao still appreciates supports who've been out since his release, like Bennett primarily, but also Anemo options like Sucrose or a shielder like Zhongli, and they're all still good options, Shao has some amazing new characters who synergized really well with him. Him. These characters are the following. Farzan, decently at C0, but almost infinitely better at C6, which I'll get into. Farina, who gives him a ton of damage bonus, as well as having just really good personal damage. And Shan Yun, who also will skyrocket your Shao's damage, increasing the damage of his plunges, giving you Anemo Particles, and also greatly helping in single target situations against bosses, which is one of Shao's main weaknesses. This exact team is one of the most popular right now, and is genuinely one of the strongest, at least as far as hyper carry teams go. Now, this team does have a lot of strengths and weaknesses as well, which I'll get into, notably that it can be expensive and need specific characters, but because Shao does so much damage in this team, AoE, but also single target because of someone like Shen Yun and the way that collision plunging works, a team like this can make Shao genuinely a really powerful option. To go over what these characters do and how they actually benefit him, as well as a percentage increase, like a rough idea of how much this team is better than others, I want to get into that, talk about it, and show you some numbers. First of all, Farzan is a incredible support for Shao at C6. At C0, she still offers you a decent amount of utility with her ultimate that will shred the Anemo resistance of enemies, as well as giving you a bit of Anemo damage bonus. While these are both great, the problem with a C0 or non-C6 Farzan is the following. Not only does she need a ton of energy recharge, but also a bunch of quality of life and damage increases are stuck and all combined into your C6. Your C6 doesn't do one thing, it does like four. It will constantly cast your skill, which helps group enemies from off-field, 
month. That's one. It generates energy for you because it's casting your skill and generating an emo particles, not only allowing her to run on much less energy recharge, otherwise needing like two to 300% at C0, but also giving energy to your entire team. On top of that, she will also give you a crit damage bonus to your Anemo damage, which is huge for Xiao. And additionally, since her skill is always proccing, she can run an efficient supportive artifact set like Tenacity of the Millilith to buff your Xiao's damage even further. Farzan in general could also run sets like Verdes and Venerer and a supportive weapon like Favonius or Elegy, even without constellations. And that's another strength of hers. But the fact that so much is locked behind her C6 is not a problem if you have it, but a big problem if you don't. Personally, I'm not a fan of this design. I love Farzan, but I hate that so much potential is locked behind her C6. But recently, for the first time ever, we got a banner that has Farzan on it, as well as one of Xiao's other best supports, Shen Yun, together without needing to pull on a Wander banner to get Farzan constellations. Because of this, a lot of Xiao mains can improve their team and actually get these key upgrades without needing to get a C2 Wander by accident. Now, while Farzan is a really big increase to your damage at C6, there are other ones as well. Shen Yun is a great one, an Anemo healer, sort of like Jean, but better in the sense that she increases your plunge damage because of the way her burst works. Her burst will heal you and allow any character to plunge, but on top of that, it will increase your plunging damage, sort of giving you the equivalent of Shenha's quills, but for your plunge damage through her passive talent, on top of giving you some bonus crit rate to your plunge attacks. The plunge damage she gives you, however, is mostly for a single opponent, which helps alleviate Xiao's single target weakness, makes them a lot stronger against bosses or against one strong enemy and a bunch of other weaker ones. I say that she mostly helps in single target, but she obviously helps in general as well, providing you not just a lot of healing, which also synergizes well with Farina and the way her fanfare stacks work, but also giving you some crit rate, as I mentioned, and running a very powerful weapon like either her signature, Crane's Echoing Call, or Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers as a free-to-play option. Great ways to increase your Xiao's damage by giving him a lot of stats. Farina is a character who also just gives a ton of damage bonus while also having good personal damage from her skill and this damage bonus scaling with you taking damage, which Xiao does through his burst as well, and then also when you heal it back up, which Shen Yun does very efficiently. In this team, though, a lot of these characters, while they are key upgrades, aren't necessarily needed. I'll get into that very shortly, but what you need to understand is that, for example, if you have Farzan and Farina, well, your last slot could either be Jean or Bennett with a ton of healing and potentially the Song of Days Pass set or another healer set, you can still get a big upgrade to Xiao's damage versus other teams, but Shen Yun sort of completes this comp very well. Same can be said about using Bennett over Farina, which is typically worse overall, but still viable, and replacing Farzan or not having her C6, while you can still definitely clear and have a strong Xiao team, it just isn't the same, as far as on C6, as I said, gives you so much value. Again, even at C0 or with her early constellations, you still get Anemo Resistance Shred and Damage Bonus, which is good. You just lose out on so much energy, grouping, damage, and convenience that it's really annoying. Not having your C6 also affects your Xiao's energy, your Farina's energy, and your Shen Yun's energy, which really is not fun. And that leads me to my overall thoughts on this team and Xiao in general. While I think Xiao, as a standalone unit, is strong in situations that are AoE heavy, this team sort of makes them an amazing carry in so many situations, either single target or AoE. If you have this sort of god team, Xiao's damage becomes great in every situation. The problem is that it's expensive. Shen Yun is a limited 5-star, so is Farina, and Farzan C6 might as well be a 5-star as well, given how hard it can be to get. If you have all pieces of the Exodia, then you will see how strong Xiao can actually be, but without it, how good is he? Well, to show damage differences in various situations, here are some numbers from the Xiao mains Discord, which obviously has a lot of assumptions, and you shouldn't take these as the end-all be-all, but for a general idea, Xiao's best team can give you a 40 to almost 70% damage increase, then it's alternatives. If you're running someone like Bennett or Jean instead of Shen Yun, you don't lose out on that much, still a very powerful team, so I don't want to say that you need every piece of this to actually clear or have a strong Xiao, but each part of it definitely does quite a bit. If you replace either Farina or Shen Yun, one of the two with Bennett, you typically are only losing out from around a 20 to 30% damage increase from a Thrilling Tales Shen Yun, which is quite a bit. It seems like a lot and it is a lot, but even if you're missing one piece, my point is that your Xiao will still feel very strong and be a great carry. What is important to understand though is that he gets a lot better with each of these key upgrades. Farzan is a big one as well, and it's not really quantifiable to show you how much C6 helps. There's no exact percentage I can splurt out, but what you need to understand is that not only is it this 40% crit damage you're gaining, it's also a help in energy, grouping, and convenience. Strengths of this team are obviously that it's incredibly powerful, very fun to play, and you don't have to do circle impact anymore. If you're not running Bennett, you can just run around. You don't have to stay in a circle, which is genuinely great. You excel both in AoE, but also now in single target because of Shen Yun buffing your single target 
target DPS. Obviously, Shao is still better in AoE, but now he can actually clear bosses a lot easier on top of always being able to collision plunge, which is when you get two hits on every plunge by colliding into the enemy's hitbox, a easy thing to do against bosses and increasing your DPS significantly. And so because of this, how good is Shao overall? Well, I honestly believe that as a baseline, having flexible teams outside of just his best one by running him with an Emo battery, a healer, ideally someone like Bennett or Shan Yun, either a four star or five star option, and then a flexible last slot, either another Emo, a shielder like Zhongli or C6 Toma, a damage dealing support or someone like Farina can already make for a strong team. Even without C6 Farzan, I think Shao excels in AoE situations, but can feel worse in single target ones or certain abyss rotations. In the current abyss, it's kind of Shao propaganda and he can just literally destroy the entire first half. But in other abyss rotations, like some of the previous ones we've gotten recently, he felt a lot worse as there are either just a ton of single target bosses or a ton of Anemo resistant enemies like the Dancer, the Satek Weenot, or a bunch of other ones. Many people who have Shao, but none of his key components can feel like certain abyss rotations are painful for him, but still find him incredibly powerful in AoE situations like events or overworld content, which again isn't as relevant, but it kind of goes to show that how strong a character who has good AoE is depends on sort of the meta and what the abyss rotation is, as that's the only hard content we have outside of events if you count those, which makes it to where at his base, Shao is really good in AoE situations, but a lot of the abysses recently have not been that, so he's felt a lot worse and less recommendable unless you have a ton of these amazing key upgrades that he has been getting. This is notably Farzan as a base, but especially with C6, Farina, Shan Yun, and Bennett just being a great sort of filler for a character that you may not have for a ton of attack percent and healing. Shao also has the strengths in his best team of not only having very high DPS, genuinely being a good team competitive with other meta team comps, but also basically needing no energy anymore because of characters like Shen Yun, Farzan C6, and maybe even a Favonius weapon on Farina, but even without that, just getting so much energy, so many Anemo particles that Shao really can focus into investing into damage. He doesn't have to stay in a circle, has great AoE, but also single target now, and I'm going to stop repeating myself, but he does genuinely feel like a premier hyper carry in this team comp, and without it, he's great in situations that are made for him, AoE content, and otherwise will just feel okay. His main downside now is being sort of expensive in the team that he wants and supports for his best team comp, while still being flexible otherwise. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about how to actually build your Shao. I'm going to try to give you guys this information very fast in a very understandable way, because there is a lot of nuance, but for the most part, it's not that difficult. In terms of the artifact sets you want, Vermilion Hereafter and Marais Chaussé are his best in slot sets. The difference between the two is really not that much. Just go based on your substats, and that's what most people should know. Farm whichever one is more efficient for you. Marais Chaussé is an efficient domain, and Vermilion is something you can get through the strongbox, with both of them being great. Vermilion gives you a ton of attack percent, and Marais Chaussé gives you a ton of crit rate. Now, in terms of the problems these sets can have, Marais Chaussé, while it gives you a ton of crit rate, up to 36% for free, can make you overcap a lot of the time, because Shao has a crit rate ascension if you're running a crit rate weapon. If you're running one of Shao's best weapons, like Jade Spear, or even Deathmatch, when you pair that with Shao's crit rate ascension, on top of the bonus crit rate you may be getting from someone like Shen Yun, it can be very easy for you to overcap on crit rate. Because of this, while the set can still be your best option, if you have too much crit rate, then it obviously won't be as good. Because of this, when you're building Marie Chaussé, you either want to avoid crit rate stats or use a crit damage or attack percent weapon to make it more efficient. Overall, though, it's a good option and similar in strength to Vermilion. Vermilion, I'd say, is the slightly better standalone option if you don't have Shen Yun. And if you do have Shen Yun, because your quills are multiplied by your crit and damage bonuses, but not by your Shao's attack, then Vermilion loses a bit of value and Marie Chaussé is slightly better, but again, only if you can fully optimize your substats to either avoid crit rate or just not have too much. And this varies based on your weapon and a lot of factors, so please just choose whichever one you have that has better substats or is easier for you to farm. Vermilion and Marie Chaussé are both great and amazing options for Shao. If you don't have either though, fear not because you can go two piece, two piece of a Nemo damage and or attack percent being great options once again if you have good substats on them and don't want to spend more resin on your Shao. It is typically only around a 10% damage increase to go for a four piece like Vermilion or Marie Chaussé, so not the biggest deal if you don't have it. Alternatively, you can do something like four piece for Essence for some more niche teams, but not typically recommended for a main DPS playstyle. 4 piece Desert Pavilion can work as well, provided you're charge attacking with Shao, being worse than his best in slot sets, but slightly better than going 2 piece 2 piece, so a viable alternative if you have it farmed. Overall, Vermilion and Marie Chaussée are your go-to sets though, picking based on your substats and what you choose to farm. In terms of the stats you're looking for, very easy, crit rate and crit damage are the best for your Shao, but attack percent is also very valuable and can be similar in strength depending on your stats and depending on how much attack or sources of damage bonus or sources of attack percent that you have for your Shao. Outside of that, energy
energy recharge is nice to make sure you can spam your burst on cooldown with the exact amount you need, varying heavily based on your team. A general Shao team can need anywhere from 120 to 140 energy recharge, but if you have stuff like C6 Fars on, maybe Shao C1, Shen Yun, or a fab weapon support, you might need zero or very little energy recharge. Typically, I recommend around 120, but in Shao's optimal team, I genuinely get away with no ER at all because of how much energy someone like Farzan at C6 and Shen Yun can give you. For the main stats you're looking for on Shao, you typically want an attack percent sans, crit rate or crit damage on the circlet, whichever one you need more of, and then either a Nemo damage bonus or attack percent on the goblet. Generally, I recommend a Nemo damage bonus, but because Shao gains so much damage percent from his burst, but also external buffers like Farzan, an attack percent goblet can be viable as well, being similar enough to where you can choose based on your substats. With that in mind, if you're running a lot of attack buffers like Bennett, maybe a Thrilling Tales user, the Vermilion Hereafter set, or even Shan Yun, who again will skill very well based on your damage bonuses, then an Aneo Damage Goblet can pull ahead and be a decent amount better overall. So I personally recommend an Aneo Damage Bonus Goblet as your standard, but attack percent is viable as well if you have better substats on it, and also depending on what your team is and what buffs you are getting, both being good options overall. Now for Shao's weapons, there are a ton of options similarly to his artifact sets. Shao's best weapon is typically the best offensive five star you have, with Jade Wing Spear being the best in slot overall. This weapon gives you a very high base stack, some crit rate, and then a ton of stats, attack percent, and damage bonus as you are in combat. Because of this, I usually recommend it for your Shao if you can use the crit rate and for just the stats you get overall. With that in mind, Staff of Homa is very similar in strength, giving you crit damage instead of crit rate, and once again, just a lot of stats. This weapon can be better if you're either under 50% HP for the bonus attack you gain on its effect, although this can sometimes not be possible with healers like Bennett or a strong healer that heals you throughout your rotation, or just in general if you need crit damage more than you need crit rate. This can be the case with the Marie Chaussée set. If otherwise you'd be overcapping on crit rate, then Staff of Homa can be your best option and overall is similar in strength to Jade Spear. Other good options include attack percent pull arms like Vortex Vanquisher or Calamity Queller, a bit worse in situations where you would want more damage bonus than attack, notably with Shen Yun, but still good overall, especially with the crit you get from Marie Chaussée. Staff of Scarlet Sands is also pretty decent, pretty similar as it gives you 44 crit rate, but having a low base attack. All of these five star options though are pretty good because of how many stats you gain and Shao is someone who does typically get quite a bit better if you have a good five star weapon. Overall though, Jade Spear and Homa are my favorites, but I do want to make it clear that Shao has a lot of options. Other weapons like Skyward Spine for a high base stack and energy if you can make use of it or Deathmatch either with or without refinements if you buy the battle pass will typically be your best four star option. I would typically use this over something like Skyward in case you're wondering and it's just really a solid option because you get a ton of crit rate and a decent amount of attack percent through its effect even though the base attack is low, you can usually make up for this with sources of attack percent from your team. Similar to Deathmatch, especially if you need crit damage more than you need crit rate, is the Blacklift Pull, which is a great free-to-play option you can get from the shop. While Shao doesn't really have amazing free-to-play options outside of this and an event weapon that we'll talk about, Blacklift Pull is great if you don't have a better option. It performs similarly to Deathmatch, usually a bit worse unless you can stack its effect reliably, but just gives you a high base stack, some crit damage, and then attack in situations where you're fighting potentially a lot of enemies, making it a solid free-to-play option. If you don't have a better one, I recommend getting this from the Star Glitter Shop, but getting a upgrade like notably a 5-star weapon will give you quite a bit more damage. Other options include Missive Windspear, which is his best free-to-play option outside of Blacklift Pull. In fact, it performs about as good, very similarly at R5, usually slightly better than an unstacked Blacklift. So a great free-to-play option if you got it from an event, although it has been a little bit of time since that event happened. This weapon just gives you a bunch of attack percent and EM, although the EM is mostly wasted. Favonius Lance can be a nice supportive option if you're Shao and your team needs energy and it can open up some interesting team comps. And also notably, the Lithic Spear can actually be very strong if you have characters from Liyue in your team. This is notably good with a Nemo battery like Shen Yun and maybe another support like Zhongli or someone else from that region who can help you stack it up, giving you attack and crit rate, just being a decent stat stick overall. While I'm not going to as much length as I do in my typical sort of complete guide videos, I will include weapon rankings from the Shao mains discord in case you guys want a rough idea of how good each Shao weapon performs, depending on the situations, but more information about that and resources from them in the description if you're interested. Also, as far as upgrading your Shao goes, for his constellations, I don't like talking about them too much because a lot of them are pretty useless. His C1 is nice and C6 can be, but C2's energy is for the most part not very valuable because it only works off field. Shao C4 is the absolute worst constellation in the game. It is completely useless. C3 and 5 increase your talent levels, but these don't do that much in practice. C3 is nice if you have his 6 constellation, but outside of that, you don't really care. And then C5 only gives you a minuscule increase in damage as your burst talent level aren't nearly as powerful as your normal attack ones because this is where your plunge skilling comes from. What 
What I do like about Shadow's Constellations is his C1. I think it's underrated. I don't think it's great. I want to make that clear. Like, it's not nearly as good as a really strong C1, like, for example, Hu Tao's. But it's a nice quality of life one that'll give you another charge on your skill, more energy, and a bigger burst of damage, particularly being nice if you can clear in one or two rotations, have really high investment, and can actually make good use of this skill or for the little bit of extra energy for one rotation. It's not the most valuable overall, though, because throughout the duration of your combat, this won't really charge up. You won't get to use it more than once because when you're fighting on Chao, you're using your skills every rotation, so you won't have time to build up three charges once you use your first three. I still like it, though. It has grown on me the longer I have played Chao, especially if you can clear very fast and if the extra front-loaded damage of another skill cast can help you clear in one rotation easier. His C6 is also insane against two enemies or if you can make use of it, but a lot of the times, like in single target, you just can't use it. And in other situations, it's very situational. Sometimes plunging is better, whereas if you can line up are fighting two enemies or multiple that you can dash through, then C6 can be absolutely broken. It just depends on the situation. Because of that, I think Shao is very strong, even just at C0. Doesn't have the best constellation upgrades, but genuinely doesn't need them. And the constellations that actually would increase his power level the most come from other characters, like if you have Farazan C6 or want to get maybe Farina C2 or Shen Yun C2, both of which will give him a lot more damage than his personal constellations. While I have talked about Chao's teams a lot in this video and talked about how this sort of premium team is so broken right now, and Chao is genuinely a very strong character with it, I want to make it also clear that there's a lot of teams you can do. This team is the best, but there are a lot of variations depending on what you have and what you don't have. For example, if you don't have Shen Yun, you could use a healer with a Farzan Farina core of either Jean or Bennett. Bennett, if you can build enough healing on him, Jean for the like sort of standard healing and her C4 would give you more damage if you have it. And for example, if you have Shen Yun, but no Farina, then you could just replace that Farina with someone like Bennett or even another option. If you want a shield, you can go Zhongli or just any source of damage for your Shao. Additionally, if you don't have Farazan, you could use someone like Sucrose for an Enema battery. Yeah, you'll lose damage. Yeah, Farazan is great, but a team comp like this can still work. And then maybe you want a better healer with Farina or you want another Enema character. For example, if your Farazan is not C6 and you need more energy, then you could do something like this. You could run Jean with her. You could do triple Enemo Farazan teams if you don't have her C6 and want just more Enemo particles. In a team like this, you could do any healer, but Bennett is highly recommended because of how much attack and buffs he gives you. Pre Farazan, teams like this were what we used. A Enemo battery, someone like Sucrose being the best, but others like even Venti can work. A healer with Bennett being the strongest, and then a flexible last slot. A shielder like Zhongli or C6 Toma that buff your damage quite a bit are very nice though for convenience and also just damage. With that in mind, you can use a very flexible last slot. A burst support works fine. And if you have C6 Farzan, but no Farina or Shen Yun, then a team like this is what I would recommend with Shao, Farzan, Bennett, and then a flexible last slot. Once again, depending on what you need with Zhongli's Res Shred sort of being standard. One of my personal favorites was running a crit Kazuo in this team because of how much damage bonus you're gaining from Farzan, the Animo buff and Res Shred, while also having Bennett to give you a ton of attack, making Kazuo actually a good character here. Ignore Aquila, I don't know why he's on that. If you don't need him in your other team, which is when I would typically recommend Kazuo, not typically in a Shao team. Other more old school teams include Shao, Jean, Double Geo, or even playing Shao with Raiden to give you energy, although that's a bit more unique. Understanding that there's a lot of different teams you can build for Shao just in general, even without the premium units, is important because I think he's a flexible and strong carry, but one that gets a lot stronger and is actually almost meta. Apparently, he's the highest usage. I don't know how accurate this source is, but his team is one of the highest usages in the Abyss, at least on the CN side, which is cool. That's genuinely cool to finally see with these premium upgrades like Farzan, like Farina, and like Shen Yun, who, yeah, Shen Yun, you're probably only pulling for Shao or some other plunge teams. Like, I really like her with Diluc, but I digress. But Farina, you probably should pull for your count anyways, and you might get a Farzan from some banner. As she is a four star, yeah, her constellations can be annoying to get and very difficult, but you might eventually get them or you might actively go for them. Let's say you are a Shao main and want to build your Shao. Well, pulling on something like a Shen Yun Farzan banner that we had is definitely definitely a smart thing to do and it gives you one of the stronger teams and enables your Shao to be such an amazing hyper carry. I hope I made that clear in this video. There's a lot to cover. I don't know if the tone I took kind of got conveyed properly. I want to be really happy that Shao is finally super strong, but also give you guys a sort of disclaimer that yeah, his premium team is expensive, but there are alternatives and kind of do with that what you will. I really love Shao. I always have and I really like the state he is in now being great in so many different situations thanks to all the buffs that he's been getting. Thanks so much for watching. If there's anything I want to it will be in a pinned comment. Let me know what you think of this type of video. It's not my standard one. I usually do a complete guide or a review. I tried to kind of mix the two, give you guys my honest thoughts on him and some more advanced information to also give you guys a sort of guide without needing a separate video. For more advanced information on some plunge stuff, how his abilities work and all that, I highly recommend my ultimate shout guide. That
that still has a very nice combo section that you can go look at if you want to learn more on Shao. And as far as the showcase goes, I tried to include a bunch of that in this video. A lot of footage of my Shao kind of destroying the abyss. So I hope I did well in that regard. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.